Tonight, we've got a non-conference matchup. Some of the most anticipated games on a team schedule are the non-conference games. Players get to test themselves against an unknown and prepare against potential tournament opponents. And, of course, here's our starting lineup. Hey, when you're putting together your starting five, you don't always need to put your five most talented players out there. What you want are the kids who are going to come out of the game with a kind of intensity you want to set the tone for the game. and we're ready for the tip. The Mountaineers win the tip, and they're off and running. The Wildcats are number seven in the polls right now, Dick. Well, the thing I don't like about rankings are simply a ranking during the season. What does it mean? It's at the end of the year, baby, when it counts. Number 32 picks up the foul. First team foul. Number zero sees his first action of the day. Man, I love to watch this kid play, Brad. He's the type of player who knows how to really lift the team. They might have him in some trouble here, Dick. He's trapped, Brad. And now getting set up in the dribble drive. Like any offense, this is fun to watch and executed well. Look for four out and one in spacing in which the big eye down low occupies the weak side of the low block. The Mountaineers have fallen short in their last few games, and they need to do everything they can now to snap this losing streak. Hey, will they rise to the occasion or plummet even further down the hole they've dug themselves into? Only the outcome of today's matchup can answer this question, Brad. Off the mark. The point guard with the ball. Moving it around the perimeter. Number 32 with the foul. Second personal foul. Number 33 set to record his first action. Hey, this guy will give you a great hustle on a defensive end of the floor. And here's a look at the freshman. Your first year playing basketball at this level is definitely an eye-opening experience. The players are bigger and the game is faster. But if you can adjust and find ways to help your team win, it can be a memorable season. Maybe in some trouble here. And the strip, quick hand. They work the perimeter. Goes up for two. He hits it. This is the type of guy that can throw the whole kitchen sink at you if you're not careful. They like his game because he can play with his back toward the basket and he can shoot it from 12 to 15 feet. And he's going to pick up the foul and all oh, look at the look on his face. I'll tell you what, he's disgusted, but so is his coach. And momentary look from three-point land. Number 33 is charged with the foul. Second personal foul. Number 15 gets his first action tonight, Dick. You ask me, Brad, this kid could easily be a starter. Chance to get an easy one here. First one is good. job getting close position good angle and then the drop step about four minutes remaining gave it up and up but he missed the shot 
Tries for two. Sinks it. That's a breakdown. That'll try to coach Bananas. Hope you to lose your hair. For two. He gets the bucket to fall. Looking for a good shot. Tan on the shot clock. We're at the three minute mark. Double team now, bad angle. Doesn't go. Off the glass and no good. He buries the shot. They go into the low block for the bucket. It sticks. He only needs about an inch to get his shot up. I tell you what, he thinks he can make the wall. I did too. And I found out I couldn't. But after watching him play, I believe this kid. Goes up for two. He gets it to go. About two minutes remaining on the game clock. Tries for two. Can't put it down. The point guard gets the ball. On the outside. Number 25. He gets the foul and the layup will count, Dick. Hey, way to play strong, my man. Way to play strong. Here's another solid junior, Dick. You know, Brad, you look at your juniors as third-year players who have been there. Nothing should be new to them by the time they're in the third season. They should know what's expected from them in the classroom, and they should know what to expect from the conference opponents. The level of familiarity should be much higher than what it was in their first year. Nice rejection. They'll bring it back out on top and reset it. I'll tell you, he missed the post guy. The post guy had the great angle, was locking on the box. I hate it when guys can't make that entry. Number 25 is called for the foul. Sixth team foul. Number 32 pops back into the ballgame after a well-deserved rest. Wow, he makes such an impact on his team when he's in the game. At both ends of the court, Brad. Opportunity now for an easy one. Hits that one. No problem so far at the free throw line tonight, Dick. Well, they're making the most of the free ones. And he doesn't miss that opportunity either. They're nailing the free ones tonight, Mr. Vital. Hey, this is where you win and lose games, Brad. He may be in some trouble here. They're working around the perimeter. Puts it on the floor and up and under. I'll tell you, really, a part of the offensive plan is to teach your post players to utilize that up and under move. And he does it exceptionally well. An opportunity for two for one. The freshman commits a turnover. With a deep shot from outside. The missed shot. On the elbow, they feed down to the low block for two. Sinks the shot. The small forward takes the pass. He looks for three. They get it to go. Great drive to the hoop right there, Dick. Well, he spotted an opening, and he just absolutely great first step, and he exploded to the goal. And half 
time at the Wildcats. Lead by 11. Let's take a look at our game summary at this point so far. I'll tell you what, you can get a sense of the story of this game by looking at some of these numbers. Still lots of time to play, though, and you can get after it. Appalachian State is not hitting the boards with any kind of efficiency in the first half. I agree, Ward. They're getting deep in a punch on this every time. Number 25 subs back in. Hey, that little breather may just have been what... And has it rejected. Defense did a great job with the block shot. That spin move not successful, Dick. I did a great job on the defense not allowing them to make that turn. Trying to feed the low block. A lot of good things happen when you bring the ball down to the inside. For the bucket, drains it. Well, you know, basketball was like nutrition, Dick. His game to be broken down into the two major food groups, and that's passing and score. It doesn't matter if you're a scorer who passes well or a good passer who can score. There will always be a spot for you on a team. Work the perimeter. Spacing so important. Get 15 to 17 feet apart. They get that rejected. Gets the J to fall. This is a great shooting display. Yeah, the defense is sitting back and enjoying the show. Top of the key. Goes up for two. No good. The small forward takes the feed. They work it around the perimeter. They need him in the game. He can't pick up any more fouls. He goes to the line for the first time. First shot, good. Well, Dick, this young man's now in his second year. Well, Brad, he's still mature. With your underclassmen, it's about improvement day by day, year after year. Misses the second shot. Tries for two. Gets it to go. About four minutes remaining. Number 50 gets the ball. For two, tickles a twine. Excellent spacing. That's so important to a good offensive set. It's even more important to have talented points up there. Yeah, that helps. perimeter they've got a player spotting up on the tree fed the low block he shoots the jumper plus the jumper takes it strong to the hoop I tell you, you know I like the way this kid uses his body Brad. he's the type of guy you want your roster when you want that inside presence his size and power is an asset the Mountaineers are going to have to switch some things up here, Mr. Vitale. When you consider time and score, I think it's time for them to ditch the half-court style and get some easy baskets. You got it, Brad. They may have to extend their defense and really look to trap in order to force some turnovers. They need points. 
The Wildcats are quite capable of playing in the half court, so at this point, they'll be able to continue playing their style, Dick, with the goal of killing the clock. Smook blocks the shot. Number 23 looks to be down emotionally. Yeah, it's unfortunate to see this, Brad. I feel for him. On the dribble, gives it up. Ball down low, puts it on the floor. It's around fadeaway. They really seem to be letting this one get away, Dick. Yeah, there's been a breakdown somewhere. They need to talk this one over, Brad. Number 50 receives the pass. Goes up with a shot. He misses the J. They'll work it around the arc. Try to come up with a steal, and they do. Here they go in transition. Tries for two. Lays it up. He can't let this guy have the uncontested shot. He just got to dig in and play some D. Well, it's time to start fouling. They got to stop the clock, Dick. It's a nine-point lead. Well, nine points still keeps you the game, though, Brad. They can't have a breakdown here, though. Foul, and that stops the clock again. And they continue to foul to stop the clock. Foul, and that stops the clock again. This might be his last foul. Hey, things are getting interesting. Number one comes in for his first go around tonight, Dick. I'll tell you, the offense doesn't miss a beat when this guy comes in. And the clock stopped with a foul. Number 22 going to the charity strike for the first time tonight. That line is really being good to him tonight, Dick. That line's always good, Brad. These guys just have to make good use of it. Hits the second. Dick, they're really getting it done from the line tonight, aren't they? And a surprisingly collective effort, Brad. Long makes his first substitution. I'll tell you what I like about him, Brad. He brings all kinds of energy to the floor. The Mountaineers now looking to run their stuff against this zone. Well, the key to zone motion offense is you've got to get good ball movement. If you get good ball movement to get the zone, they really slide and use the skip pass to make it tough for that zone to adjust. He is going to the line. Misses the front end of the one and one. They go into their motion offense, working with four around one here. I tell you, the four around one, spacing is a key. You better have good space. Swatted from behind. Never saw him coming, Brad. Baseline inbounds. Gave it up. Zone offense now. He lets it go. He knocks down the jumper. Foul, and that stops the clock again. Steps to the line for the freebie. He makes the front end of the one and one. They're making good use of their free throw opportunities tonight. Good free throw shooting teams seem to always give themselves a chance to win. Second shot is good. They're seeing them all fall from the line tonight. That's a crucial plus down the stretch, Brad. 
And now getting set up here in a four round one. I tell you, the four round one makes it tough to defend the big guy on the interior with one guy. It really does. You got to get help on him, and if you don't get help, he's going to have a field day on the interior. Look at that spacing. The Mountaineers just couldn't get it done today. Of all the times not to step up their game with this loss, now they're sitting in the middle of a two-game losing streak. Hey, I hope the coach has a backup plan, Brad, because they can't afford a repeat episode in their next game, or they'll be heading into a dangerous territory. Appalachian State fought the good fight, but they still come up short. It's tough to lose such a close game, but these kids can hold their heads up high with the effort they put forth. So for Dick Vitale and Aaron Andrews, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long. Always nice to be recognized as one of the players of the game. Hey, Brad, it's always as a player. Great feeling to.